Hey everyone, I'm King. Welcome back to King Spade channel. So finally, after a series of Gunslinger video, it's time to show you the Gunslinger build video. For the Gunslinger, I am using the SS weapon, short for the sniper rifle and the shotgun weapon combination. Now I am using the gold weapon for the Gunslinger. As you may already know, this weapon is just a borrowed weapon, given by the game to the 12 selected guider to test on the Gunslinger and I am one of the selected guider. The given gold weapon is of our own selection. We are free to choose which gold weapon we want to use and I chose the victory weapon for the sniper rifle and the last weapon for the shotgun. The given gold weapon come with plus 10 defined level and upgrade level equivalent to twice the number of the character level. So in my case, my current level is 120. So the gold weapon upgrade level is 220 which is the maximum upgrade level at the current version and it also come with level 12 given enchant of our own selection start as well so for enchant because i am using the penetration build i ask for given final penetration start on the man hand sniper rifle weapon and i wanted to balance off my start with the final physical damage bonus start so i asked for given final physical damage bonus start for the offhand shotgun weapon notice that the offhand enchant have lower start than the man hand weapon this is also why I specifically want the penetration start on the man hand weapon and final physical damage bonus start on the off hand weapon so that I have more penetration start than the physical damage bonus start. If you are wondering, that is so lucky of us to get such high defined, high upgrade and expensive given enchant. Well, this weapon will be taken back after the event ended. It cannot be dismantled or sell or transfer the stats to other weapon when the time the game wants to retrieve it back if the weapon is not as per the original or is missing we are required to pay for the total cost equivalent to the value of the gold weapon and its overall progress stats and potentially being banned from the game so bye bye to this weapon in a few days but luckily as a token of appreciation the game actually awarded us with a free transfer for the refine and upgrade start to any weapon of our choice after the event and but only the refine and the upgrade start not the enchant. According to the game representative, the given enchant if it is given, it will be too unfair for the game community. Well, the given enchant does potentially cost a house or a car if you want to have that kind of progress. It is expensive. Not everyone can get that, so it is fine for me. The define and upgrade transfer is good enough, alright? With the weapon out of the way, the armor, accessories, and talisman are basically from my ranger equipment. The Gunslinger and Ranger can use the same armor, so all I need to do is just re-equip it back with no other alteration. Since the Gunslinger main stat is using the deck stat as well, same like the Ranger, it is just perfect because I am using the level 120 dex white accessories on my Ranger and I can use it for the Gunslinger. I have been constructing my Ranger for the penetration build, so for the Gunslinger, I know that I too want to build it as a penetration build. So I use back the level 110 penetration talisman and all of the penetration cards that I am using for the ranger. All in all, everything is the same just like my penetration ranger build. Just that the weapon is changed to the given gold weapon. For the weapon, I am using 4 seal penetration cards. The last gold weapon is dropped by lower tier MVP so it only has one card slot. I didn't think it through when I chose this weapon earlier on. If I were to choose again, I may want to use the gold weapon that have two card slots so that I can equip another seal penetration card. For armor, I use three of the Ultraman blue cards for the Ultraman card effect. By equipping four blue Ultraman cards, normal attack or skill damage has 3% chance to deal additional 20% damage to all size of monsters, but only to the normal monster. The card effect does not increase damage to the MVP or instance boss. Another one Ultraman card is an access card. I recently got a zombie slaughter drop card which increased 12% damage to the undead monster. So I also use this card to increase my damage to the undead monster. As you all know, the armor card are exclusive to defensive card or HP card. There are only 3 cards that have offensive stats. One of it is the zombie slaughter card. The other two are the dragon tail cloak card that have stats to increase damage to insect monster and choco card. Also a 
cloak card that have start to increase damage to brute monster. The other armor card I use cards that increase the HP. For enchant, I use Prontera Dex enchant for all of the armor equipment. For the accessories and talisman to increase the penetration start, I use two Nezuko penetration cards and three Penomena fire cards. Now I use the Penomena fire card because I intended to play the gunslinger as a fire element build. I am also using the desert wolf pad that have the ultimate fire bolt and divine fire enhancement skill. The ultimate fire bolt skill increases the owner fire damage by 20% and the divine fire enhancement skill increases the owner fire damage by another 25%. So when both of these skills are triggered, I will have 45% fire damage increase. I also use the fire enhancement medal at the battle achievement. It increases another 20% fire damage. To change the weapon attribute to the fire element, I need to use the fire converter. One fire converter can last to 20 minutes, so you need 3 fire converters for 1 hour. After testing the gunslinger with a fire build for few days, although it is viable, you can use fire build for gunslinger, but let's say if I prepare enough fire converter for an overnight FK grinding, I find that the upkeep is a little more expensive than when I'm using the fire arrow for the fire element penetration ranger. I find that using the converter costs twice the price than the fire arrow for the same duration. So I don't know if I want to recommend fire build gunslinger to you because the upkeep use a lot more zany. Or you can just utilize the gunslinger magical bullet skill that force convert the weapon attribute to the ghost element. But here's the thing, as a penetration build, it will be hard for you to use the ghost element mainly because of the card selection. At the game current version for the ghost enhancement card, you can use Aster card as a weapon or the cloak tower manager card for headgear, which for the weapon card, you also have the seal card for final penetration start and stone shooter card for final physical damage bonus card. Similarly, for the headgear card, you have the dryad card for final penetration start and the red card for final physical damage bonus card. With these cards, although you have a lot of choices, but that also means that you can't have it all. You will have to sacrifice one start for the other. On the contrary, if you use the fire element build, you have the Phenomena fire card and it is an accessories card. In my opinion, a perfect element choice to balance the stats as a penetration build. You can have penetration or physical damage bonus card on the weapon and headgear and fire element card at the accessories and talisman. If you are using the crit build, the ghost element is perfect for you. You can use the ghost element card on the headgear and there are a lot of crit related card for weapon and accessories like the Raedric Archer crit card, Bloody Murderer crit damage bonus card, and Stone Shooter physical damage bonus card for weapon. For accessories, you have the Bloody Knight crit damage bonus card and Galapago crit card. The way I see it, it is all planned out. The crit build gunslinger can use the ghost element. The penetration build gunslinger will be better off with the fire element if we look solely on the card arrangement. But of course, we have the fire enchant and ghost enchant which you can play around on the equipment but I bet most players will just go for the Prontera enchant on all of the equipment or Payon enchant for those more ambitious players. And there is me who have a specific build that I am aiming for that use the Alberta penetration start on the accessories. There's actually no ultimate reason why I go for this enchant. I merely want to have more penetration start. I have Prontera dex enchant on the other accessories and talisman. For headgear, I am using 3 Dryad penetration card and 1 Zeek penetration card. For start allocation, I max out the dex start. The gunslinger light and heavy weapon mastery skill increases physical attack that scale with the luck start. So the remaining points I put it on luck to get more physical attack. With this, here are my stats. Currently, my shadow equipment is only at level 2. I should have saved a lot more crystals before transferring to the gunslinger. I only realized I have insufficient crystals after mindlessly using the crystals at the exchange center. So I can't really make use of the shadow equipment skill. For inscription, I get the dex and luck stat. I will be getting the physical damage bonus stat as well. Because I am using the penetration build, I don't really need the crit and crit damage bonus stat. And I already 
already have maximum attack speed, so I may not one day attack speed start as well. Well, if I have enough inscription stone and guild contribution, I may get it as well. The rest of the stars are mostly for PvP. For Pioneer, similarly, I won't be getting the crit start. I will be getting the rest of the stats. The stats at the back are mostly for PvP as well. Alright, after using the SS build Gunslinger for few days, for bound skill recommendation, I recommend the first and the last skill. The tracking skill and the death eye missile skill. The tracking skill although is the Gunslinger first job skill but it is also good especially for the sniper rifle user. The skill itself deal a tremendous amount of damage at about 900% damage. It additionally deal 160% damage if used with the sniper rifle, so a total of over 1000% damage. This skill is easily my most favorite skill in the Gunslinger sniper rifle build skill arsenal. It deal very high single target damage and only has 3 seconds cooldown. The only problem with this skill and for all of the Gunslinger skill for that matter is that it has a longer skill animation compared to the other job class. When you are killing monster with a group of players on the field, the monster will already be killed before the skill even hit the target. It is quite frustrating, really. The dust skill is my least favorite. The damage is not as great as the other skill that is available. It deals average damage. The only time you want to use this skill is for its knockback and stun effect, which is useful in PvP. But I guess if you want to get the final physical damage bonus start from the shadow equipment skill, you can use this skill too. Piercing shot is just a so-so skill in my opinion. The skill does not deal as much damage like the tracking skill, but it deals damage to multiple targets in a straight line. Maybe that is also why the damage of this skill is scaled down, because it can deal damage to more than one target. But this is one of the few skills in the Gunslinger skill set that can inflict bleed effect the target. Shout out to Windy who pointed out the bleed effect that I myself didn't aware of previously. The bleed effect deals 60% damage over 6 seconds. For penetration build, the bleed effect actually deal quite a noticeable damage to the target. The other skill that can use bleed is the mass spiral skill. This skill can deal a huge amount of damage if you can charge the skill longer before release. But if you put it in auto mode, it will just shot normally like any other skill and it deal just average damage. Since it need manual control, this is only effective in PvP. It also deals bleed damage to the target. Maybe both of these skills can be a deadly combination in PvP just for the bleed effect. The Death Eye Missile skill is my second favorite skill for the shotgun weapon after the Desperado skill for two reasons. One, it has ridiculous damage at over 2000% damage and two, apart from aiming a target that is within 8 meter radius, it additionally at the same time will also aim the target that is marked by the Crimson Marker skill. So usually how I use this skill is for monster grinding, I will stand at a spot that can attract all of the surrounding monsters towards me. And when the skill is used, it launches two lasers at one target. One is at the aim target and another one is aimed to the target with the Crimson Marker, dealing twice the damage to the target amounting to over 4 4000% damage. The other surrounding target that is within the skill area will also receive damage. And yes, you get it right, with such huge damage, the skill animation is also longer. It has 5 seconds cooldown which is a bit long in my opinion. With the shadow equipment, the skill cooldown is reduced for every target hit, which is super helpful. For engrave, the magical bullet skill increased physical attack by 9%, a great buff to the ghost element build gun slinger. Platinum Alter skill, this is more for PvP. Flip the coin skill, this skill in design is for PvP, to inflict charm or fear effect to the target within the skill range. With the shadow equipment, it increases lifesteal or neutral element damage, making it more usable in a normal monster grinding setting. And lastly, the Desperado skill. Desperado skill is my favorite shotgun skill. It shoots at 5 random targets within the range, with each shot deal around 500% damage. If there is only one target in the area, all 5 shots will be directed at the target dealing over 2500% damage. It is so powerful you can wipe out 2-3 to three targets in one single skill. For value
Validation, the Fallen Angel skill is a mobility skill. You can dash forward two times with this skill. Chain attack skill increases your double attack chances. Concentration Realm skill in Shadow Equipment make it function like the Platinum Altar skill. It can now negate incoming range physical damage. The Platinum Altar skill can withstand 11 times of attack. The Concentration Realm Shadow Equipment skill can only negate 3 range physical damage. And lastly, Mass Spiral skill. I had talked about this skill, not my favorite skill to be honest. For Contract, Gatling Gun, Slug Shot, and Anti-Material Blast skills are all very powerful skills. They all deal long range and massive damage. But they are all situational skill, especially for the Gatling Gun and the Anti-Material Blast skill. When using these two skills, you are essentially not able to move. The aiming direction are also kind of fixed. You can't change the skill direction easily. An agile target can easily dodge the skill, making these skills only effective in some situation. For example, against those stand steel bard and wizard combo in PvP, this skill is perfect to land a continuous hit on the target, maybe can be used in GVG too. Other than that, I don't see it is practical to use this skill in any situation. With the exception of the slug shot skill, I absolutely love this skill. It shots a giant energy orb to the target direction and blasts the area with over 8000% damage. I found myself using this skill more in instance when fighting the instance boss and on MVP. And for the soul, the notable skill to mention is the Banishing Buster skill. It adds extra true damage for normal attack when under the Magical Bullet skill effect. Another advantage for the auto attack build. So let me show you how the sniper rifle plus shotgun weapon build looks like when doing normal attack with maximum 1000% attack speed. In the SA server, at the weapon detail, the percentage of how much damage the gun deal to the monster is not shown. According to the Taiwan version, the sniper rifle deal 518% damage to all size of monsters. The shotgun shoots 3 bullets per shot, which each shot deal 152% damage, amounting to 456% damage if all 3 bullets hit the target. At normal 100% attack speed, it said here the sniper shotgun shoots 0.22 round per second, not even 1 shot. So for maximum 1000% attack speed, I guess that will be 2.2 or 2 hits per second, not very fast. For shotgun, it shoots 0.29 round per second. At maximum 1000% attack speed, that is about 2.9 or 3 hits per second, just a little faster than the sniper rifle. Although it is slower than the other job class, but with higher damage power, it can dish out the target in 2 or 3 hits. With such a slow normal attack, in my opinion, the sniper rifle and the shotgun build is not designed for auto attack build, but I am going to test the normal attack DPS nonetheless for 1 minute just for reference. For this test, I am going to use the concentration realm skill. At maximum stacks, it increases 30% physical damage. The reinforced field skill bullet pass through the matrix will deal additional 39% physical damage. And oh, I forgot to mention about this skill. Bullets that pass through the matrix can also inflict bleed damage, dealing 30% physical attack damage. And lastly, the Crimson Marker skill. Dealing normal attack to the marked target will deal additional damage that scale with luck. And one more important thing, paired with the Crimson Marker Pursuit skill, the marked target will be inflicted with bleed effect, dealing 3% physical attack damage every second as long as the target is still alive. Very good when attacking MVP or players in PvP. So let's test the DPS using the sniper rifle first for 1 minute. I'm going to test this on Frioni. I am using fire converter in this test so I deal fire damage.
and after that using the shotgun. Surprisingly, the shotgun has slightly more DPS than the sniper rifle for auto attack DPS comparison. Maybe because the shotgun has faster reloading time and also have smaller size of bullet magazine, make it trigger the overload skill more often. Now that you see it on the MVP, let's see how it looks like on normal monster for both sniper rifle and the shotgun. Now did you notice that the bullet magazine is automatically reload? That is because of the crimson mark a dual skill. I had changed the Predator Crimson Marker passive skill to using the dual skill. When the mark target is killed, it will reload all guns immediately and gain one charge of Crimson Marker. So essentially, with this passive skill, you don't have to worry about reloading. But this will only work on normal monster when you are AFK grinding, that you can actually kill the target before you ran out of bullets. If you are against the MVP, obviously it will not be kill even after you fire all bullets. So that's why I use the Crimson Marker Pursuit skill instead to have the bleed effect on the MVP. I think this is the more effective way on using the Crimson Marker passive skill. This can also be used by the AR build, the auto rifle and revolver weapon build. Now let's use skill to deal damage to the MVP, alright? Obviously for this task, the MVP is not going anywhere. It will be easier to aim. So I I can just use the strong powerful skills. So that's about it. I did make a DPS test prior for a longer period of time. The DPS is around the same. But in a real gameplay on the open field, the MVP will be moving around. And using all these flashy powerful skills are just not practical. So what do you think of the sniper rifle and shotgun build gunslinger? The sniper rifle and shotgun gunslinger is definitely anything but weak. It deals tremendous amount of burst damage whether it is skill damage or just normal attack. But on the other hand, the biggest letdown for me is its long skill animation when using skill. Before you can cast a skill, the target may already dead being killed by the other job class. Most of the powerful skills are also also easy to dodge making the skill impractical to be used in any given situation in the game. I hope the game make a little adjustment on that. Other than that, the sniper rifle and shotgun gunslinger is an interesting job class to play. So what do you think? Will you play the sniper rifle and shotgun build gunslinger? Let me know your thought at the comment below. Alright, that's it for this video. This time video shoutout goes to... Thank you for always supporting me and this channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. And as always, happy playing!
拜拜。